Hi there, welcome back to this channel. It's Sofian here. I help businesses like yours implement digital signature and workflow automation solutions. And today you'll be learning how to set up your DocuSign account in the right way. Even if you've used DocuSign for quite some time, you will still benefit from this lesson. So I recommend you don't skip it. We could spend hours in a DocuSign settings uh, admin page, but today what we'll just learn is the most important things you wanna have set up before you get started. That includes setting up your users and their permissions, adding your branding, selecting the right time zone, and a couple of other things. All right, so let's just get started. To access the admin settings, you wanna click on that little tab at the top right of your screen. And the first setting we wanna go uh, through is the original setting. So that page allows you to select the right time zone for your account. Um, by default, DocuSign will have assigned the uh, Pacific time uh, time zone and the default date and time format that appears on the account is also set on the American format. However, please note that this doesn't dictate how the date and time will appear on the actual document. That's only for the actual um, DocuSign web app itself. We can um, configure how we want the date and time to appear in the envelopes in a different setting and I'll go through that later. Later. Okay, let's jump to the branding. On this page, you have the possibility to add your uh, brand. So enter the uh, business name, hit save, and do it one more time just right here. Make sure you tick the box set as sign default. Then you want to click on create your theme. And on this page, um, you can see that there's two different logos that we can upload the signing and the email logo. So I'll go through each of those. The first one, the, the signing logo, is the one that will appear at the top right uh, corner of the screen of your recipients during the signing process. This logo can be a high quality logo and the size doesn't really matter because DocuSign will uh, resize it anyways. So just upload a logo that's less than 300 kilobytes but don't worry too much about the actual width and height. The second logo is the email logo, and that's the one that will appear at the top of the um, email that DocuSign will send to your recipients to notify them that they have an envelope to sign. So what you could do for your email logo is make sure it's not too large. Now, the size that I actually use myself is 296 by 76 pixels. Um, so just go ahead and upload a smaller version of the logo, otherwise just resize it. And what I also recommend is that you send an envelope test before you send your first envelope to a recipient to check that um, this isn't too big. And you also might want to change the color theme that DocuSign has already um, got in place by default. To do that, um, just click on one of the colors, eyedropper, hover over um, your logo to choose the color you like and select save. So that's it for the branding. Now let's have a look at your users and groups. So obviously the user page is where you can set up your users, but I actually like to start by the permission profiles. So the permission profiles page allows you to um, create and manage different permission profiles. What um, DocuSign comes with um, by default is admin, sender and viewer. Admin users can do whatever they want with DocuSign. They can log in and change the settings. They can create, share templates if they want to. Senders um, can only send and use templates by default and they won't have access to this admin panel. Viewer users have a very limited access. They can only um, see uh, what has been sent to them. Now, let's just assume that I want one of my users to be able to uh, create templates, but I don't want them to be admin. I don't want them to have access to this, um, to this admin setting page. So what I might do is create a new permission profile, which I could call, for example, sender plus template, and go in user permissions, scroll down until I see template and give them the, the ability to uh, create and share templates. And to do that, I'll just select the share button and add. So now that you understand permission profiles, uh, we can go to the next step, which is groups. So I've already got administrators and everyone by default. I did add the sales group um, before and I might just also add, for example, the accounts team. Setting up groups will make uh, managing your users much easier uh, in the future. So don't skip that one. You'll thank me later. 
So now that we've got our permission profiles and groups set up, we can go ahead and add our users. And once again, you could have definitely started by setting up your users, but then you'll have to go back and edit permission profiles or groups later. So I just like to do this step um, at the end. So you've got a couple of ways to set up your users. Um, you can set up users one after the other, or you can also do a bulk creation. I'll show you both options. So let's just go ahead and add one user. So email address. So here, what you want to fill out is the full name, um, job title and company can also be useful. And finally, the last step um, is for you to uh, select the permission profile. So we've just created one before. Let's just select that one. And you can also allocate a group to that specific user. Add user and you're done. So as you can see, the status is still pending. That's because the user hasn't um, clicked on the link um, that they've received in the email to set up a new password and finalize the uh, setup of the account. When they'll do so, the status will show as active. Now I'll show you the other way, which is bulk setup. So you want to click on bulk actions and add users, and then you want to click on sample file to download the actual CSV that DocuSign um, has already prepared for you. So you can just remove all those details and add yours instead, save the CSV. And once you're done, just go back to the DocuSign app and upload the CSV here. That's a very quick way to set up um, users in bulk. Great, so now we've got all that users set up. Let's just customize the signing settings. This page allows you to customize the signing experience of your recipients. Make sure the allow recipients to view mobile friendly documents with responsive signing is ticked. DocuSign will then render your PDF or Word documents in a format easy to act on when viewing those documents on mobile devices. The second thing is to make sure that the date format appears in the way that you want. So by default, again, it's in the US format, but if you're based outside of the US, you might want to change this to um, something different. And lastly, most of my clients like to um, have the PDF version of the finalized document automatically sent um, to them into their inbox once the signing process is complete. So make sure you tick that box if that's something you want. Otherwise, you're going to have to log into DocuSign to download the signed document. Don't forget to save. And now let's go into the sending settings. So the sending settings page obviously allows you to customize the way envelopes are being sent from the account. One setting that I think is important to modify is the way DocuSign will replicate the information in fields. So let's just say that you've got um, an envelope with two different documents and those two documents have two pages. If we leave the option replicate information only an individual document. That means that if you want the information to copy from the first page of the document onto the second page of the document, it will work. However, if you did also want an information from that first page of the document or second page of the first document to copy in the um, other pages of another document, that won't work. So you might want to tick that box instead. And if you just got super confused, don't worry, I got very confused as well when trying to explain that. So that's not your fault. Once again, don't forget to save and let's jump into email preferences. So by default, DocuSign will send you uh, email notifications every time there's something that happens in the account or on an, on an envelope that you have sent or received or viewed. Now, um, those are default settings for the account at, at the account level. That means that even though you've got some of these things set up here, you can still uh, manage this on a per user uh, basis. And I'll show you how later. By default, everything is uh, selected. So DocuSign will send you a notification for pretty much anything. Now let's jump into reminders and expiration. So this page allows you to customize how you want DocuSign to behave when it comes to reminding your recipients that an envelope is due for signature or that an envelope will expire. So if you do want that to happen, make sure this is ticked and the first value um, relates to the amount of days that DocuSign should wait before the first reminder goes out. 
and the second value, that one, um, relates to the amount of days that DocuSign should wait between each reminder. And by default, DocuSign will send a reminder until the envelope expire, which is currently due uh, to expire after 120 days. So for the expiration, be very careful because if you choose, let's say 10 days, that means that after 10 days, if your recipient still hasn't signed, you'll have to send them a new envelope, which, which will then cost you a new envelope. And lastly, you wanna go into the comments tab here on the left and enable or uh, disable the comments so that your recipients can leave you comments on the envelope, which you will then receive by email. So now let's see how we can customize settings on the user level. So from the home page, click on your the little silhouette here, and it's obviously got my image, but it might not have yours if you've just set up your account. And I actually recommend that you add your photo because it looks quite nice when your recipients receive the email from DocuSign. Uh, it will have your logo and obviously your uh, professional photo, so it's a nice touch. Now let's go to signatures. So you can add um, you can configure how you want your signature to appear on your documents. Um, you can also draw or upload one. I actually recommend that you do this from the mobile app. It's much easier than using the mouse. Now, jumping into privacy and security, here you can change your password in the future and you can also add a two-factor authentication. You can also change the original settings. Um, if you're uh, based in a different time zone than the actual uh, rest of the office. And finally, you can access your notification settings just right here. So that's it for the admin settings. Your account is now set up and you're off to a great start. All right, so now that your DocuSign account is currently set up, you can start sending your first envelopes. In the next lesson, I'll be teaching you how to set up your first DocuSign template. And if you would like more assistance and explore my consulting options, you can use the link in the description below and book a free 30 minute call with me. If you've got any questions about anything that was covered, please leave me a comment below and I'll make sure that I answer as soon as I can. And if you did learn something, which I hope, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the next ones are coming along, don't forget to hit subscribe. I will see you in the next lesson.